guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, we are doing something different. And this, I, this is the first time that we're doing something kind of different. Instead of me reacting to initially a show, I will be reacting to an opening and talking about my thoughts on an opening. So, um, this show, Irise, <laughs> I can never pronounce it right. Um, this was a show that I did watch, um, years ago <laughs> that I really don't remember jack shit, <laughs> um, about. I knew that they were, um, planning something for this series and such because I think this is very similar to a beloved franchise, like other franchises in the work where they're like, yes, you know, it's been so many years and we're going to do something different or we're going to do a whole revival of it because, you know, we need other audiences and younger audiences and people to genuinely get into this show, which I mean, honestly, is not a bad idea. I, I've, you know, I've talked about this with like my mom and my friends and stuff. And I'm like, you know, hey, they're, they're revamping so many things to have like the younger generation, um, get into it. That's why Disney is doing what the fuck they're doing with, you know, their movies that are SHIT for live action. And they need to stick to animation because there's no reason why we need to have a live action version when we can have, you know, the animated one. But we'll talk more about that. But, um, other than that, let's go ahead and watch this opening. <laughs> In three, two, one, go. Oh, 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 wait, wait. It literally froze on me. Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> Give me one second. Okay, okay. Now we're ready. I had to go back and make sure because that was super weird. I don't know what the freak happened. But take two in three, two, one. Go. I mean, okay, number one, the song, the beat of it is nice. It is weird to see them in like, like, just, mm. God, I forgot how cute she is and precious. See, this just makes me, like, hopeful, but I, I don't think they would do it. They literally just said idol with her. Oh, my God. <laughs> Even the guys in the bar. Oh, my God. <laughs> they really went all in for this. I mean, it makes you wonder who is animating this. The song is really good. I, I can honestly imagine myself downloading the song. Oh, damn, she's everywhere. <laughs> okay, so hold up. Let me go ahead and ask you guys. Um, well, that's, I'm gonna have to cut that out. All right, whatever. I'll do that after. Um, so I don't know how many episodes the show is officially is currently in for the revival series of it, but is it good? I, I mean, because as someone who liked the original, it, it's like, should I take a chance and watch it? Because see, it is okay. Cause see, the, like I said, seeing stuff like this, where, like I said, in, in the previous part of the app before, you know, it didn't want to play for me. Um, seeing beloved classics getting a revival still, you know, makes me a little hopeful for that one series that I really want to get a revival to tell the whole story. Really, there's two. There is two. And it's funny because, like, when we were in the pandemic, they both got a resurgence for it because, you know, there were a lot of people getting into anime and, and of course, one of my girlfriends who 
as I talked to you guys about a, a while back ago, after me and my girlfriends were like, okay, hey, like, she was like, I've only seen Sailor Moon, and we looked at her like, hold up, babe, you only seen Sailor Moon? She's like, but no, 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 I've seen Pokemon and Digimon and stuff, and I was like, okay, so you only seen Pokemon, Sailor Moon, and Digimon. That's all you've seen. You ain't seen no Car Captor Sakura, you ain't seen no Yu-Gi-Oh, you ain't seen this, this, that, and the third, you ain't seen the real good-ish. So when we finally, I, I was like, okay, so I was like, all right, so okay, let's watch an anime with her and such. So me and my other girlfriend, we were like, all right, so every Saturday, we're go Saturday night, we're going to watch an anime with her. So first, we, I was like, all right, let's watch Jujutsu Kaisen. Not knowing what the heck we were thinking that w what it was going to lead up to. Because this girl has, you know how, like, okay, you know Emma Richu? Okay, I, I remember this one video she did. If you have not seen it, I'm going to put it in the description below or in the comment. Because, okay, she was talking about how she never wanted to get into K-pop. Because she knew how, like, big and grand K-pop was. And so she was listening to music one day, and one song came in, and then boom, she got addicted, right? That is how my, my friend is. She literally watched the first episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, and literally fell in love with the show, binged the show in less than a couple of weeks. And, and, it, and I was like, honey, we were supposed to watch this weekly. We were supposed to take our time. Take our time. Do you know what take our time means? That means go episode by episode by episode by episode. Not, I'm going to binge this mother effer and I'm going to watch it from the beginning to end. It got worse. Let me tell you, it got worse when Gojo popped up. This girl was going AWOL. Like, oh my God. This girl was like, yes, I, I, I found him. I found the man of my dreams and such. And, ish. and I'm over here like... Girl, my girl, my home girl, my bitch, <laughs> like, but honey, like, yes, I know Gojo, Gojo is fine. As and I'm talking to everyone as this, we all know Gojo is good looking. But as I told her, I was like, you need to broaden that horizon just as much as you've broadened your horizon on different animes. You need to broaden your horizon on anime husbandos. You can't just have one. You can't have one. Look at me. Look at me. For a freaking example, I fall in love with every freaking male anime guy who pops up on any show I watch. The recent is, yes, Aki from freaking Chainsaw Man, because I was like, oh, okay. Like, this this anime, this show seems interesting. Then the bloody gore ass, because you know that got me with my horror fangirl edge. And then next thing you know, I'm on TikTok, and I just, I see. <laughs> I see. I see this damn TikTok am, and I went nuts. And then before that, before Aki, it was Claude from, um, I'm the, I'm a villainous, so I'm taking the final boss. So yes, I totally get that and such. But, um, yeah, going back onto this, like, it, it is similar. But the music on this is really good. The art style, the visual effects, everything very very gorgeous. I would love to see who animated this, but like I said, going back to the question that I an I asked, is it something worth watching? Because it, it's so funny. I think this show was maybe on like week one or week two for it. And it had to be at least maybe week two, maybe even week three. And the guys who I normally talk to in this podcast that I'm in, everybody initially said like it wasn't the greatest. So I was sitting here thinking like, damn, so this is now officially the first out of the new revivals or reboots or remakes for... Um, old classics that is a downer that sucks and you kind of feel bad for that but it's only like because see with me I try not to judge a show like not only based on the opening and the ending because the opening and the ending are always like godly and such this was a godlike opening like <laughs> really this was gorgeous everything about it is top tier very pretty and aesthetically pleasing and such and how like it gave me feels to like how I was when I watched like Dress of Darlings opening the first time and how because Maureen is you know my best girl and I love her so much and such but seeing like how we can take one character and just have her be everywhere it also kind of gave me feels to the one show that I reacted to like several years ago I think kind of around the time 
um, when I was still a wee little small little channel in 2016, going on 2017, um, called Gamers and such, and how that gave so many references to so many games, and you could see that with a little bit in the beginning and, like, towards the middle and such, and, and a little bit towards the end. But it was really good, honestly. I If I had time, I would, you know, immediately watch it, but of course, because... I am so busy. Hence, this is the girl who just watched the last 10 episodes that she finally caught up on for JoJo Bizarre Adventure. And that is all coming out on Sunday. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge if you want to know. Because I don't know what day this is going to come out. This might come out Monday with Summertime Rendering. It might come out Wednesday with Love After World. Hell, I might even say, fuck it, put it out on Tuesday and such. I don't really know. Um, but this was pretty. Very pretty. I mean, it also gives me hopeful because I don't think, like, with, um, of course, like, the, the big thing I was talking about was Oran High School Host Club because, you know, as someone who, that and Made Summer because I love those two series, like, so freaking much. Like, we all know Fruits Basket is near and dear to my heart, but, um, both Oran and Made Summer, like, came in at two different times in my life. One, Made Summer came in, like, I think almost a year or two after I graduated high school and Oran was while I think I was still living in Nebraska. So I was like still in middle school going on to high school. And we all know how a trip Oran is and such. <laughs> but <laughs> it's good. <laughs> and then you know how when you were just so excited to see how a show is going to conclude and you don't get that conclusive ending you just get like this what I like to call is the safe ending where it's like oh hey we're satisfied with it but you know in your heart you're not truly satisfied and you want to see that original manga ending aka like I said Oran and Maidsama it it gives me hope it really truly does especially when Fruits Basket came out like that really gave me like, the start of a possibility of seeing those two classics, even though people feel some type of way, mainly towards Midsommar, maybe a little bit towards Orhan, I don't know. I mean, I know, like, for the last, like, what, year and a half, the biggest thing is I, I've seen is the backlash of, um, <laughs> Vampire Night, that's all, <laughs> of that show, and, and, and what happened in that show. As somebody who also watched that, like, several years ago and decided to rewatch it with, um, one of her girlfriends one random night and such, because she was like, you want to rewatch it? And I was like, sure, we're, we're going to go back into that, okay. But, I mean, hey, because, you know, it had zero in it, that's all I cared about. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it, it may, like, seeing this, like I said, really makes me truly hopeful for the future of anime and being like, you know what, we want to revamp or re, you know, I mean, how they're doing Tokyo Mew Mew. You You've done... Fruits Basket, this, Tokyo Mew Mew, um, I'm trying to think of other beloved classics that have also gotten that, like, revival-esque. I literally cannot think of anything else. Um, you've done so many. So, why not? You know, every single time when something comes out, people are like, oh my god, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Let me be hopeful this once. <laughs> but, okay. So, um, let me, let me talk about this. Alright, so, going back into Disney. Da -da -da -da. Okay. <laughs> um, and how I, I feel about that because this also says, okay, with revivals and reboots and just remakes and everything, um, sometimes it is good and sometimes it is bad. Usually it's good depending on like when you get the general audience, you get the nostalgia thing. And that's what also I feel with this. This also gives hella nostalgia for a lot of people including myself who did watch the original and then um you know the nuance for new people who are getting into something like this and like yeah okay you know someone said this is good so let me check it out but it's like you always get that one thing what people said should I watch the original first or should I just watch this and then watch the original and then you have people like me where like if I'm coming to you as someone as someone who loves once again Kingdom Hearts and such if you came up to me and said, Deja, Queen, Deja, whatever, Queen Deja-ish, 
and being like, okay, DJ, I want to play Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> where should I start? <laughs> Number one, we're going to have a conversation. <laughs> we are having a conversation about that ish. That will be, like, that day will be a glorious day for me, in my opinion, and such. So this is the same thing of when somebody has asked me, oh, hey, DJ. And I'm like, yeah. I want to get into Pretty Cure. Boy, was your girl ready for that ish. I surely was. But, you know, with Pretty Cure, you can kind of really go much anywhere. Very similar to Fate and such. But, like I said, with revivals and everything and looking at this, this, it has the potential. It really, really does. Um, like I said, even with hearing from my guy friends talking about it and saying, like, oh, I'm going to drop it or da 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 whatever, um, I've heard some good things about this show. Truly. Um, just is not like, you know how, because I am a Libra, um, my sign and how it's like balanced. You, you sometimes will hear more bad than good or more good than bad. And that's kind of what I've been hearing more about this show. It's a little bit in the, in the between for it. I would have to sit down myself in my free time, whatever the fuck I get free time, um, and, you know, kind of give that initiative and that answer for myself because I, you know, sometimes you want to take other people's words for it and such and their answer for it and be like, oh, yeah, like, okay, pfft, I'm not watching this and such, just like I said with Kingdom Hearts or anything. And, or even with Pretty Cure, you tell me, like, I want to get into it and I can say, okay, bam, start with Kingdom Hearts, whatever and such. But if I tell you Kingdom Hearts 2, which is still one of my personal favorites, to start with that. But if you really want to know the nitty gritty, I'm going to tell you, start at the beginning like everyone else. It's, you can still start anywhere. That series is great. But if you want to know the people who really, truly want to know that detail, you still want to start at the beginning. Pretty here, like I said, you can go anywhere. Just like with me. I'm just saying, because it's similar to that in a way. Not really, but, you know, yeah. But... Still, the bad thing about um, doing reboots, revivals, remakes, because, you know, let's also talk about, like, um, I hate talking about this because it always sparks, like, a lot of talks and conversations. Okay, superhero movies. As someone who loves the hell out of superhero movies so freaking much, the one thing that I'm always, 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 always... <laughs> tired of like seeing now um is like another superman getting remade or another batman getting remade now despite this is someone this has come from someone who has not seen you know the robert pattinson version of it and i i heard hella good things very good things i really did i just not once again i have not had time to watch that film i know it's long I need to watch it. I want to watch it. That's all. I'll say about that. But I remember, um, this was like a while back ago, when I, it wasn't Henry Saval Superman. It was the previous guy who did Superman. So if, if any of you guys have seen, like, um, <sighs> any CW, DC comic show, so like Arrow, Flash, um, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, maybe Star Girl. I don't know. I mean, I, I stopped with Flash. You know, that's my only ending. But you know, I'm happy and sad for that. You know, gas and such. Um, the guy who was in that series, especially really more of between crossing over of Arrow and DC's Legends of Tomorrow, and then a little bit of Flash. He was the previous Superman, and um, when. Henry Saval came in, I was, I was a little like, okay, it's almost like how I, I talked to this with my girlfriends about it. I was like, okay, if you know the show Doctor Who, um, when we're, we're getting a new doctor and we're, we're all still attached to that previous one. When we find out we're getting a new doctor, we're all like feeling some type of way about this person. We're like, oh my God, we're not going to get attached. Then you watch a couple of weeks or maybe a good month or two with the new doctor and you're like, dang, I really like this dude. And you get attached to him. And you're so happy to see how many ever seasons that he, she, whoever is going to be a part of it. Then all of a sudden, they say they're going to leave. And then you, and then that cycle starts all over again. You get upset. You get attached. You kind of don't like the new one. You get attached. And then it starts all over again. Like a good behind cycle. That's kind of really what it was for me for like Superman and Batman. So 
it in a way like like I said it's a hit or a miss with reboots revivals and everything I love how you know because of this it you have to kind of talk about that and such um for example Fruits Baskets revival especially as someone who religiously um watched the OG Fruits Basket read Fruits Basket in its entirety it's interesting because when you're looking at it, or okay, I have to, I have one more after this. All right, so when you're looking at it, you're you're looking at it as two ways, and with the other comparison, I'm looking at it in the same way. Um, I'm the fan girl who freaks out over everything <laughs> and such, but then at the same time, I'm the critiquer where I'm like, okay, what is it that's different with the revival of this show that is technically the truer version? That is more closely to the manga than the 2000 S one that we got so many years ago. That is like a half version of the manga and such, but only stops at a certain amount of point. That's very similar to the next one in point, Car Captor Sakura. Um, we know how that was very close, like 100 percent close to the original series. Yeah, they maybe twisted some things and everything, but of course, when you're in um, something like an anime studio when you're doing something for animation you can't have everything in it as someone who also has said that with book adaptation movies religiously as someone who when Hunger Games came out and I watched the blu-ray or the DVD with my parents like a couple of months before like no I, I read the series and binged that series just like I did with fucking Twilight um, and then rewatch the movie version with my mom and my dad and having to explain like oh hey here's the differences of this this is actually what happened in the book people understand that and such but then some people don't um that's why i say like when i watch something that is whether it's a continuation revival whatever it's that you know fangirl happy happy joy joy ness <laughs> but at the same time over here critiquing every little thing that they did wrong but also being like you know so happy but still at the same time sad and such there could be so many things that could be different from this version to the original version and i'm not mad at that um i would have to see for myself and such there could be really like <laughs> Hella meaner criti critiquers than me being like, oh, why the fuck did they do this? They should have did this. Da 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 da. Like, esh, whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it just happens. That's all you can really say about that. But once again, opening. Honestly, I really want to listen to it again. So we're going to do that. I'm going to listen to it again. I just want to, like, it's a good song. I, like, number one, I need to know who the heck sings this song so that I can put it on my freaking phone it's a damn good song like oh my god you know how just when you're at work or you're just somewhere and you just need to listen to anime music that's me I have like I have a long ass playlist it was worse when I was in middle school I had a long 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 playlist <laughs> but I okay one thing I do love because it's coming up um, the guys in the back with it. Yeah, right here, right here, right here. <laughs> with, the, with the idol sticks. Every single time when I see that part, I get reminded because the group did this. And when they did this ish, I was like, oh my God, I kind of want to learn how to do that. Okay. So my favorite, uh, J-pop girls band from Bandity, aka Rosalia, has a big, 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 <laughs> I love how it's 21 minutes, 22 minutes of me talking, um, big ass fan base, and, you know, your girly is a part of that fan base, because, you know, Rosalia is just, mwah, like, amazing as fuck, um, there was one day where I was just searching up like Rosalia songs to just listen to because you know you want to listen to some good rock music and such um and it was a video of I think it was like four or five guys doing the synchronized dances and moves 
with the idle pen lights. And I thought that was really interesting. I mean, it, like I said, just seeing that in this uh, in this opening literally gives me feels to that. And there are so many people who would do that with so many different songs. Like, I haven't seen it for any other bandity esque um, girl band for bandity. I have not seen it for the D4 DJ girls or even um, Una Usume or how even Idol Master. Like, I'm really surprised about that. Like, because Idol Master it is so popular. Same thing like with Hatsumi Miku. But I, I think I need to look that up. Like, there has to be people who have done like a 5, 10, 20, 30 minute video of them literally synchronized dancing and such because I, I think that is really not only aesthetically pleasing to the eye because it just catches and it just looks glorious especially when you're like <laughs> when it's in the middle of the night and you're just like you want you want something to look at you want something to ah I would not be surprised if I see that on like freaking TikTok and such I mean we are in the age of like we're once again everything is all on social medias and such and so it wouldn't really surprise me to just see that because that shit is cool fucking cool but yes I mean this is a damn good opening definitely will listen to the song several times and such probably will be stuck in my head tomorrow while I'm recording a whole bunch of things so you know thank you <laughs> But, um, all I have to say is, yeah, this is nice. This is really, uh, once again, different to do. Um, I don't know how this is going to go for everyone. I know my Patreons are probably going to enjoy it. So I will say this to my Patreons. If you want to make this, like, a, a thing that you want, please let me know. Um, Give me recommendations. Just don't don't pile it up on me. You know I'm already busy as is. Uh -huh. Um, it could be anything. It could be something old. It could be something new. Just kind of make sure that the opening song is well. The opening with the song is on YouTube, <laughs> so that um I can react to it, talk about it, and such. Because I mean honestly, this was really a, a really cute interesting breath of fresh air something different to do and to also ramble for like 25 minutes <laughs> even though I do that <laughs> and you know in any of the videos that I've done I've done that for fucking years you all you know me you fucking know me so <laughs> yes I really enjoy doing this so if you like I said if you want to see more just you know let me know you can always just slide a little message on Patreon, you can slide a little message on my freaking Twitter. You know I'm on Twitter. You know I'm there. If you follow me on Twitter, it, especially, but if you're a Patreon. I don't know when I might have to make this public for anyone else. <laughs> but for right now, because you know Patreons. They got that first day. So yeah, Patreons. Maybe after, like, once I'm done with love after world domination, maybe we'll all do, like, two or three um, separate videos of this. And then continue us with, um... Summertime rendering until I find out like whatever the hell I'm gonna watch next because as of right now I really don't know what I'm gonna watch next for Patreon stuff um because I I think someone has requested something but I don't really know um I have to go back and look and such because the last message that I got was really specifically the request of this and such but yeah other than that I hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> this video um if you did please give me a like it really helps me out also subscribe to my channel i make videos every single day join the master squad and of course i will see you guys all next time i'm officially gonna have to now make this into a playlist uh for the channel so this will probably just be like queen deja extras or some shit i don't know <laughs> Deja reacts extra. I don't know. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.